Next to Mario's name, there's no other name has mentioned more in other talks at this conference. And so St Stefano, first time I saw Stefano was, I think, seven years ago at the CCC conference where he gave a great talk. And then one slide, he said, yeah, and then we found this universal cross-head scripting bug affecting the Adobe Reader plugin, which made, which exposed cross-head scripting problems in every single website in the internet at this day. And it was just one slide in his talk. And also he's the guy that came up with HTTP parameter pollution, which fed, I think, at least three PhD theses. And he wrote Dominator and he did lots of stuff. And so we are very, very happy to have him here today to tell us about JavaScript libraries. Stefano. So, in a second. Uh, okay, okay, thanks. <clears throat> Thank you, everybody. Um, who I am, Stefano. Um, I work at Mindless Security. I'm a co-founder and CTO of Mindless Security. And I proudly uh, lead the Mindless Security Research Lab that uh, allowed me to uh, develop a Dominator and Dominator Pro and do some pretty cool stuff. Uh, really uh, difficult, but uh, very interesting. Um, so, this is the agenda. I will just try to wrap up um, a couple of years uh, of uh, activity on uh, JavaScript uh, while testing uh, Dominator, while testing uh, um, stability, but also the stability of Dominator, but also as well. Uh, the security of uh, uh, client-side application in the browser, of course. Uh, what came up, came out, um, was that a couple of years ago, the first uh, um, I tested, I had a look at uh, um, the top uh, 100 Alexa uh, sites, um, and it turned out that uh, there were uh, 55, uh, 57, uh, there were found at 57 pages on uh, 57 different sites um, that were uh, vulnerable to at least one dom based cross scripting. Uh, so yes, it's, it's not r real statistic because you, we, we we would probably need a larger number of uh, uh, sites, but uh, it uh, makes some point at least. Um, I also was kind of new to uh, reading JavaScript uh, uh, at that level. So I was very surprised to see that uh, uh, developers um, were uh, using common patterns uh, while, uh, for example, uh, parsing uh, particular strings while in order to, uh, I don't know, uh, get uh, values from the query string or from uh, the cookie. And we will see uh, that sometimes that those parser uh, are, and those patterns are actually anti-pattern. Um, naturally, when you uh, deal with JavaScript uh, in the client side, you have to deal with libraries, uh, and in particular jQuery, of course. So we will uh, see how uh, jQuery can be very um, dangerous if uh, uh, not really, if uh, the developer does not really know what's going on inside jQuery. So, the first one is actually jQuery, and uh, I want to start with a question. Is jQuery a sync? 
What's a sync, first of all? It's uh, uh, a function or a method that, I that is potentially dangerous if uh, the uh, argument, one of the arguments, can be controlled by uh, someone that is by an untrusted source, let's say, so, let's say that. Uh, and of course, uh, that if that arg argument uh, is not uh, validated uh, uh, the right way. So let's see what's a sync. String copy, the C function, is considered a sync because uh, it's uh, known that uh, if uh, the destination uh, uh, length uh, uh, is not uh, uh, larger than the source uh, one, uh, there will be uh, an overflow. Uh, it's known that execute query um, is a sync because uh, the argument is a, a, a SQL query. <clears throat> it's known, probably, that jQuery.html is a sync because actually it's saying, hey, put some HTML here. No one complains about them because uh, they are, uh, they actually do uh, what they say. jQuery do more. Uh, jQuery at least does three things and uh, uh, actually uh, since, uh, uh, be because of that, uh, a developer um, thinks uh, he is going to use it for something, and so th is uh, not the purpose uh, of, uh, uh, of, the, of the method. As the, is, uh, the, the use the, the, the developer wants to make of it. And uh, this is why it can be considered more than a sync. It's actually, in my mind, a design problem. Um, indeed, uh, jQuery was written uh, with flexibility in mind. Uh, with, um, yesterday we were talking um, with Dennis about jQuery. jQuery uh, allows fluent uh, development. So, uh, it was uh, thought, uh, conceived uh, with that in mind. Uh, that is why jQuery can, uh, jQuery as method, as static method, allows um, different kind of arguments and according to the argument, it will behave so some in some way. Uh, the first one is, which is the, the one that is the, the most used, is uh, uh, as a selector. Find uh, me everything. Uh, inside the page uh, that uh, um, has uh, some ID with some value and so on. Uh, the onload is, an, is the other one, for example, is if uh, the argument is a function, then that function will be executed on, uh, on uh, uh, the, the onload event uh, when the page loads, finished loading. Uh, th the last one is uh, the actual sync, uh, and is when uh, jQuery um, takes uh, the first argument uh, uh, that contains uh, uh, tags, angular parentheses, and so on. So, what happened here? If I <coughs> just uh, write something like this. It goes executed, but why? Since uh, it, uh, it's not uh, used inside the page at the moment. It's because Can you see it? Okay. It's because uh, this uh, is the function that is actually called. Uh, 
uh, when, jQuery, when uh, you uh, call jQuery. Uh, we can see it uh, right here. jQuery function selector, our uh, dangerous argument, context, and then return new this. So this one is the init function here, method here. What happens here if, uh, well, this is a, a quick test, so optimization. Uh, if uh, it, it handles also uh, if uh, the argument is a DOM element, is an object that belongs to the DOM. So uh, there are four, sorry. Uh, it will uh, return uh, a wrap, it will wrap jQuery object around the, the element. The, uh, then, it, well, another little optimization, there is one body so there is no um, need to look for it. And then, look at this, if type of selector is a string, so let's do the type checking, then uh, let's begin to uh, be ex um, elastic. First, a little optimization if uh, uh, the, uh, the first uh, character is an angular parenthesis, then it uh, um, is an HTML. So do not uh, do your uh, match, um, uh, regular expression matching in order to understand if uh, there it's actually as, uh, considered as a, a selector, CSS selector, or HTML. But let's go on. What's this match? What's this quick expression? The quick expression is uh, this one. And we just can now see the first uh, comment about uh, the possibility to abuse uh, of jQuery uh, because of an anti-pattern that was used, that which was something like this. Okay, so it's not in. Uh, th there is actually uh, this is a reckless use of uh, jQuery. Uh, that was a common pattern, uh, it, it is a common pattern. If you look at uh, JavaScript code around the web, you will see several uh, kind of, uh, se several po um, points where uh, uh, you can see something like that. Actually, I, I also wrote a blog post about it in uh, 2010 maybe or 11. But uh, I was using this pattern as an example, not as the problem. So uh, also Ma uh, Mala, I think, um, well, I thought that, okay, jQuery is a sync, is known that uh, jQuery can uh, uh, allow HTML and will uh, execute JavaScript. So why should I uh, open a ticket, open a bug for that. It's on the specs. But Mala actually opened it and uh, said, uh, this, uh, a lot of developers use this kind of code. Uh, a, a lot of developers don't know probably that uh, uh, if there is an angular parenthesis, uh, J, uh, jQuery will uh, parse it. So, do something for this pattern. And they did with this piece of code. They added uh, this, pe this piece that says, if uh, the, the first character is uh, uh, hash, um, or uh, it is not an hash, and uh, then do not consider it or consider it uh, as uh, 
HTML or not. So group it uh, and uh, group it and consider as a, it as a selector, but just if there is the hash at the beginning. So they actually were trying to fix this. <laughs> so what about, uh, I don't know, this. Right? What about this? This is still a problem. So it was uh, a uh, useless uh, fix. It was just, it, 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 I started to think about jQuery as uh, the new PHP. <laughs> so they tried to fix uh, one, uh, l l uh, one bad line, developer's line at the time. Okay, so actually, yes, now they uh, they test for uh, just the first if the first character is an angular parenthesis. If is it if it is, then they parse it. So they will they allow only uh, full. Uh, tags, they allow HTML only if uh, the first character contains the uh, opened uh, angular parentheses. Okay. Okay, but why are you uh, trying to add new tests? Because the design is bad. Because you are trying to fix something that is not actually fixable. Uh, well, it's fixable if you separate the HTML parsing, so you won't uh, allow any more uh, jQuery with uh, HTML as an argument, and create a new method, there is, parse HTML, that explicitly parse it. So, just to, this is not working because uh, it's, uh, I think it's 1.8. Let me see, 1.82. 1, 1 and uh, with, uh, at 1.82, still, it does not be, have to, to be the first character. It can be uh, everywhere. Uh, well, on uh, 9, 1.9, we have uh, uh, a, bi a little solution. Uh, <clears throat> these are the tickets about uh, uh, jQuery, already uh, talked about the, the first uh, two. Then there is uh, a, a third one. Uh, jQuery needs HTML escaping functionality, whose status is undecided, because they think they are saying, oh, maybe we have to do a plugin. No, <laughs> okay, we, we don't know why, but it's like mystery. But I think uh, is uh, the the problem is that uh, there was the original sin, no. Uh, the design issue. Uh, with Mario, uh, Mario some, uh, uh, maybe one month ago, something like this, uh, tweeted about uh, a reintroduction of the, uh, of the jQuery issue, uh, even on uh, the jQuery site. Uh, after some uh, inspection of the code, uh, I found that uh, uh, they were using a plugin that is called jQuery Migrate. Uh, actually, uh, they reintroduced the 
the bug in order to uh, create retro compatibility with, uh, with the jQuery, the previous jQueries. So uh, we did a joint post together and uh, I put uh, it on Reddit and uh, in order to understand that there was some, com some interesting comment and this is actually uh, an interesting comment, I think. Uh, th this is one, this Geocar. One of my biggest gripes about jQuery, using the same interface for query and executing is a bad idea. That is, script, script, simply shouldn't do anything at all. Actually, indeed, it doesn't because it doesn't, uh, uh, works with the script, but it works with uh, the image source on error. So, is, do, is, uh, got the point. Okay. So, as a selector, are we all okay? Uh, if this va variable is uh, tainted, I mean, uh, is not, uh, is, is unvalidated uh, and so on, uh, is there any problem here? I don't know. <laughs> I think that maybe with time and attacks, uh, maybe with uh, uh, some particular um, um, event that can be observable by the attacker, I'm pretty sure uh, it can be uh, used as well. Uh, I hope that uh, someone uh, will uh, go on with this because uh, I think there's some good uh, space to research on. So what's the solution? jQuery is more than a sync then validate your input, sanitize, no, sanitize, escape and code uh, the argument of jQuery. No matter which version you are using, uh, and also for the developer, for the yeah, jQuery users, read the whole documentation because in the documentation it is writ it's written that jQuery uh, allows HTML as in uh, as an argument. Sometimes it's not written uh, because the documentation is never really, really, really complete. So have a look at the code. If you are uh, a very uh, thorough uh, developer, you, you will, if you're a paranoid, you will have to look at the code because you want a breath, you won't live without looking at the code of the library you are going to use. For jQuery developers, uh, remove, please, the old version, put them in a zip file, and don't expose it to the internet because someone could just pick up the first uh, casual version and use it without even knowing that maybe there is some problem uh, on that particular jQuery version. Just put the latest uh, one or a version it uh, with major versions and stop. After that, of course, uh, please uh, separate uh, jQuery behaviors uh, with uh, different functions. <coughs> this is uh, something that uh, is still around. Uh, quite common pattern. Uh, the use of jQuery AJAX method uh, actually allows three way. Another functionality feature uh, that uh, allows three way. Uh, the first one is by giving explicit, uh, is, you know that you can call, you can create HTML, uh, XML HTTP request uh, using the dollar Ajax uh, and then giving by giving an object that contains uh, uh, a URL, uh, some data, and you can create a JSONP uh, request by um, adding a callback. There are three ways to add the callback. The first one is explicitly put the callback inside the uh, query string. The, the second one is uh, 
to tell uh, Ajax with uh, an element of the object that the name of the callback is that one. And uh, uh, the third one is by using a placeholder. I found that by accident uh, because I, I, I didn't uh, read the documentation, but I saw the code before I read the code and then I read the documentation. It's always better. Um, and there is actually a point here uh, in the code that says uh, uh, callback too many callbacks Ajax Okay, I can I can't uh, remember, but okay. Um, there is actually a regular expression that looks for a pattern that is uh, equals question mark. Okay, uh, yeah. So I have to look at equals question mark. Okay. So. Uh, every, I think you already have the idea of what can be done. It can be probably uh, used the HTTP parameter pollution in order to uh, override the callback by injecting another callback. Uh, so, according to what the code is using, and the fact that you, of course, the attacker, of course, can control partially the URL, uh, I created a little uh, priority map. So uh, if uh, there are three methods, three kind of, uh, uh, three ways of using uh, URL, object, placeholder, if you can, uh, um, you can actually try to force uh, by injecting something in the URL, and uh, there will be, um, uh, for example, there will be, uh, the, the placeholder will win against uh, the object. The, uh, or uh, if you, when you control the URL, uh, there will be the possibility to um, add, uh, in the end, the callback. So, Let me let me find uh, oh let's let's take this and uh, of course I, if I can control, if I can add uh, okay, let's do this. If I can uh, control the first part, I can always add uh, uh, an hash symbol and uh, comment out the rest. So uh, there is no problem for what's going after. Uh, indeed, what, let's see here what's going on. So CB is uh, the first, uh, uh, is the first one, so the alert is going to be used. If uh, I use the second, so I have JSON P C B you can see here 
that uh, actually uh, jQuery sees that there, uh, uh, there is the JSON P uh, way to use it and adds it at the beginning. So I can still try to add the callback and uh, you see here that the, uh, the actual request is, uh, uh, let's see if it's better here, okay. You can see that the actual request, uh, the, the first callback is the one added by, the, uh, by jQuery and the last one is the one added by me. So in the case of PHP, we have, if we have a JSON uh, written in PHP, JSON P service, then the last one is the one that counts, that's taken in consideration and it's used. Uh, so you can control the, the callback name and execute uh, all the code you want. And so on. So I tried, 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 and I saw that uh, in, according to the case uh, the developer is uh, using, there will be some, uh, some, uh, um, some possibility. Also, uh, you can see here that uh, um, there is an interesting thing here. If I do, you see that if I tell JSON, uh, JSON to use JSON P to jQuery, callback equals uh, something is added by default. Okay, so it's added uh, always if there is no other um, JSON P or um, uh, directive, okay? What can I do now? I can do this. And, the, and add the placeholder that will uh, uh, make think uh, jQuery that she doesn't have to add his own callback but she has to, for example, I can rename the callback to something I want, uh, it, it won't be, it will be ignored by the server. And uh, actually, you can see that uh, there is no more callback at the beginning of the, uh, of, of the request, but uh, the jQuery function is added to my placeholder. So now I can actually use my, place, my, my callback. And uh, this way I uh, drop down, drop, I put out of the game uh, my, the, the real callback and I can now control actually uh, the callback the way I want. <coughs> of course, uh, it was the solution. <laughs> the con by encoding uh, according to the context, so was the context is the URL, encode using URI encoding. In this case, encode the URI component would, would do the job. Another things, thing that uh, I've seen a lot and uh, I, uh, I know that uh, I heard David Ross uh, talk about regular expressions. Okay, uh, most, uh, a, a lot of uh, uh, parsers, a lot of developers uh, try to sanitize or try to uh, identify bad patterns uh, in the input and block uh, those patterns. So this is from uh, mail.ru, which is, uh, I, I will show you. Uh, they do, okay, they say, okay, 
let's do the uh, HTML, uh, uh, let's use the HTML function, but uh, the input uh, uh, text must not, must not contain tags or must contain just a, a few tags like uh, bold, uh, italics, and so on. They create this. Also, they decoded, they unescaped the, the, the input. So I have, uh, the attacker has uh, every possible character. Uh, he can control every possible character, he can inject every possible character. Here, there is uh, at least one problem. This point, the dot, uh, does not match new lines. Oh, let's see if I have it here. Okay. Mm. Actually, there is um, there is uh, there are like uh, three whitelisted tags that are uh, italics, uh, bold, I think, or uh, another one. So if I say e. I, sorry, I, uh, it's too, okay, so this is italic, let me, okay, let me do this, okay, if I say, okay, let's try to use the S, it's not used because it's not in the whitelist. Uh, since uh, with Dominator would be quite easy to see what's happening, uh, you can actually see that is the input is unencoded, uh, so there is the operation, there is one operation that is unescape or uh, decode URI component, I don't remember. So if I put this uh, uh, new line, it will be decoded into the actual character and uh, there you go. So, now, I hope uh, I wrote it well. No, there is of course some problem here. And uh, well, at least there is uh, there is something going on. Okay. I have two, two things to say and uh, too, too little time, so let's go on. Uh, even here, uh, is, uh, in, uh, there is this uh, replace uh, uh, regular expression and uh, you can see that there is something wrong over there. Uh, it should be very similar to this Okay, you can see here. But actually, there is one character missing, that is the slash. So they actually are the escaping the question mark. It won't work, this. This won't work. This is not uh, going to be uh, a sanitizer. Or, fortunately, for them, don't work as expected. Uh, actually, you can see that uh, um, this code is going to use inner HTML only if 
contains a particular meta character and JavaScript or alert. Wow. You can see here that if uh, matches meta character and matches JavaScript or alert, it will be considered evil. So I thought, OK, let's not use it. Let's use uh, on error uh, uh, prompt. OK? Wrong. Because the second regular expression actually returns uh, an array. So it's always true. And uh, so it will match only the content with the angular uh, parentheses and so on, meta character, and will be evil, and so it won't be executed. So they were very fortunate in this case that the regular expression was wrong. So the solution is test for those regular expressions, please, or not, if you are very, very lucky. Uh, this is uh, very interesting. Uh, it's a, a web tool uh, from a company, and uh, it takes. Uh, um, uh, let me show you what it does. Here it is. <coughs> is uh, inside an iframe, this code, it takes, uh, it uh, um, waits for a message from another window and uh, um, parses the, the argument uh, to an object and uses the object in order to build a, rec uh, sorry, parses the object if you follow the flow uh, and gives the object to dollar Ajax. So, actually, anyone can uh, ask this iframe to create uh, a request, an XML HTTP request uh, to uh, his own, where he is hosted, to the server where he is hosted. Let's have a look at it better. What is build request? Request is uh, uh, is the, the actual object that will be uh, given to Ajax. And uh, you can see here that request input is the one that uh, the attacker can control. And uh, some of these uh, uh, fields are used with the input uh, the attacker can control. Uh, there are several, I, I will show some, just uh, a couple. There is here, there is a new header that is set and is uh, the origin header. So actually, the attacker just try to use it, uh, uh, sets the location, create the object with the URL. And uh, sorry, but uh, I forgot to show you that uh, there is this. The response is given back to the, to, to the window. So the attacker can create requests and read the response. Yeah, this was the import, most important part. So the attacker is very uh, willing to, motivated to break it, okay? Uh, so it tries to create, uh, and uh, he sees that there is the origin header attached to the request. So since it's, uh, the, re the request uh, attaches um, the origin of uh, the attacker window, then the server won't allow it, given a uh, 403, forbidden. OK, now attacker asks less politely. It tries to overwrite the origin header. Oh no, this is not going to happen. Now, attacker is a bit frustrated and uh, decides to have a look at the jQuery documentation. 
and he sees that uh, he can control, yes, data, he can control headers, but uh, it didn't have any um, success with that. Also, there is this HR, uh, XHR, uh, R fields, which actually do this. jQuery uh, allow to overwrite uh, attributes of the native XML HTTP requests. And that's what the uh, attacker tries to do. And uh, voila, no, no custom header anymore. Let's see why. Uh, okay, and uh, also the message is uh, given back, so the, the, the response is given back. We, you can see here that uh, there is, uh, if uh, there is no header, oops, XMS origin is sent with uh, the over uh, right. There is no more custom header, but there is more. We can try to have a look at the code. And here, look at this. Oh, sorry. Look at this. Uh, the set request header is inside try catch block. That is why the it didn't break because uh, the exception is actually uh, catch. There is more because uh, I can uh, actually create new custom headers. I won't use in this case this, but I use headers and I will do I will force an exception by adding a character that is not allowed by the set request header, but after I added all my nice custom headers. This is the, the, the header, but there is no origin header because I triggered the exception before it was sent. Okay, last. Uh, the JSON one, just very quickly, it's known, I have already blogged about it. Uh, this uh, is from the RFC by Crockford. This is wrong because uh, uh, if th this check allows uh, the use of self uh, inside the, uh, the, uh, the, the text that has to be parsed as a JSON object. So actually, uh, that regular expression allows non-JSON object to be considered as valid. Like, if you see here, there is an A. So, this means that JSON A is considered valid. By looking at uh, uh, some object that uh, is inside the window, I found that self matches the regular expression. So, actually, this can be used again by abusing the um, 
Internet Explorer uh, setter uh, uh, functionality. And uh, this is a valid JSON. This is considered valid JSON, and actually it uh, um, executes uh, JavaScript like uh, this. Okay, but it's old stuff. Yes, it's, it was um, old. Actually, if you look at uh, Google code, uh, uh, there is uh, one interesting, uh, at least one, the GWT JSON utils, the latest one, uses actually uh, the, regular, the old regular expression. So it is or, uh, still out there. Uh, of course, uh, there is new JSON.js. Please use, uh, use JSON natively if possible. And remember that once there is the, the, the object is parsed, there will be uh, the possibility, th this object is still a tainted object, fully tainted object. I will uh, just uh, talk about, uh, okay, UI, uh, YUI uh, still has uh, um, some problem with HPP. I just say that uh, it's uh, uh, quite uh, easy because uh, the code simply sub substitutes uh, the, this placeholder. So actually you can substitute, uh, uh, we, you can use uh, this feature, UI, YUI feature, uh, and inject uh, new callbacks inside the, uh, as, as well as uh, it was with uh, the Ajax, uh, dollar Ajax. Uh, the last one is about uh, um, third-party services like analytics. I've found uh, several issues on Omniture, on uh, Google Ads, uh, uh, and so on, that uh, actually introduced DOM-based cross-site scripting uh, because they were flawed uh, in some way. Uh, there is one that I was allowed at least uh, silently allowed to. Okay, let's use uh, Google Chrome. Google Chrome. This is Microsoft's uh, uh, homepage. And what happens here is that uh, there is a web, the web trend uh, uh, JavaScript, analytics JavaScript, third party JavaScript, that uh, uh, has some code that looks for, uh, looks for wt.debug the, in the URL by design. So, if there is that pattern, then it will try to open a window. So it's not, I, I'm showing this because it's not really, really exploitable because most of the people use uh, pop-up blockers, okay? But it's, uh, it's interesting um, because it will open uh, a new window and enters in debug mode showing something like, uh, I don't know, but something like this. The problem is that the URL, you can see here the injection point, the URL is written as it is. So you just have to add uh, in the hash part uh, your uh, injection vector and uh, create uh, uh, and uh, let it go. Um, no, no, uh, it uh, was opened by is opened by Microsoft, so is in the. Uh, last uh, last thing about this. Uh, no, I wanted to show the code, but there is no time, so. Conclusion, JavaScript. Uh, uh, 
can be read. So it's not white box, is, uh, it's not black box, it's white box. Uh, Secret development in JavaScript is not fully uh, known and not fully implemented, even on companies that uh, uh, knows about security, knows about security. JavaScript developers can be very good, but sometimes they really suck because JavaScript is hard, very hard. And yeah, we just scratched the surface of JavaScript security, I'm pretty sure. And let's give JSanity a try because I think it could be interesting. So thank you. So we went a little bit overboard with time, but I think it was totally worth it. Thanks. Are there emergency questions? <laughs> if not, approach Stefano afterwards and yeah. lunch should be served. Also. Uh